Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Coon Rapids United Methodist Church. It is such a joy to have you all here with us for worship today. Please look around. You might see some familiar faces. Some of you I know are with family and friends and you've been here before. Others of you may be in the room for the very first time today. So I encourage you to greet one another after the service, spend some time getting to know each other. Stick around, I'd like to meet you as well. Again, my name is Pastor Diana and it is a joy to have you here. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and holy God, look at what you have gathered here. You have brought together this beautiful community Lord, use this time to reveal your glory again and again. Lord, open our minds and our hearts. Open our eyes, our voices. Lord, breathe in and through us in this time that we may know your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand if you're able and join together as we sing.
Gracious and holy God, we do come to adore you today. Lord, be in every bit of this this evening. Thank you, God, for the music, for the voices, for the smiles, for all the interactions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen? amen. <laughs> this time I would like to ask the Smith family, come on, you guys, you get to light the candles. <laughs> Tonight we light all five candles, including the white one, the Christ candle. Christmas is here, and by lighting this Advent wreath, we've been an anticipating God's arrival with hope. We're symbolically celebrating the birth of Jesus, God coming to earth in human form to walk among us, teach us, live and breathe with us, to sacrifice for us, to die and rise again for us. What an incredible act of love God has shown us in his willingness to come this far for all of us, all people on this earth. Tonight, we celebrate God's gift by loving Jesus in return and loving others in his name so that everyone can know how much God loves them. Please pray with me. God, as we light these candles, may the light of Christ remind us of how deeply you love us. As we celebrate your gift, teach us to live it out in our lives so that people will know your love as well. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. What a beautiful song. Come on up, Dan. So one of the best parts of Christmas Eve, of course, is the telling of the Christmas story. So Dan is going to read the first part to you. I encourage you to listen with new ears. You ready? Can you do it there? Yeah, tell it there. Okay. <laughs> oh, in case you're wondering, it's printed in your bulletin in case he messes up. Pay attention. <laughs> The music was great, you guys. Thank you. From Luke 2. At that time, Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant. And while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have a baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. Here runs the first part of the story. Please stand as we sing.
may be seated. You ready, Dan? All right. So before I read part two, I want to give kudos to Diana, who um, has had, I know, a tough week. She had to preach a sermon on Saturday, a funeral sermon yesterday, and another one today. That's a lot of back to back to back. So I know you do. We're uh, very blessed to have you serving us, Diana. Again, reading from Luke 2. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw them, they told them what the angel had said about the child, who all heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Here ends the reading of the story. Thank you, Dan. At this time, we're going to be inviting our choir to come and offer a musical offering to us. And once the choir is in place, we'll be asking the ushers to uh, come and take the offering today. You ready? Okay, come on, choir.
fun. Anybody agree? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a joy to gather on Christmas Eve. I have to tell you, I am a seasoned Christmas Eve-er. It is, uh, it is in, my, in my heart, in my life. It is something I have not been able to avoid at all in my life. I grew up in the church. Um, my mom was the music director, so any of you kids out here know what I'm talking about. Where is he? A couple of them. Um, my mom was the music director, so it was never optional, really, for me. I had to go to church with her all the time, including Christmas Eve. And I must tell you, I will say, based on how I behaved as a child, you are a remarkably well-behaved group tonight. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't heard any, like, yelling, crying, no babies flying around. Or maybe I just can't hear very well. I don't know what it is. But you're doing so good. Yay. Christmas Eve is always such a wonderful time, and, and I've had the great honor of watching a lot of pastors preach Christmas Eve, as I've only been the pastor of a church for about four and a half years. And so the advantage of sitting over in here or over there and watching pastors and congregations, I've said this before, and their interactions is sometimes you can see and you can go, man, that guy's really dying up there. This is terrible. You should stop. And other times you can really see when it matters to people what you're saying. And I would say the two hardest times to preach outside of funerals, funerals are hard for good reason, they should be, but the two hardest times to preach are easily Christmas Eve and Easter. Can you guys see why? Everybody wants to go home. Who's got a roast in the oven? Anybody? Anybody? Come on. Fess up. Come on. It's good. You can smell it still, your imagination. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you're here, and so taking that time, we talked about yesterday morning in worship, to breathe, taking that time to breathe and say, Lord, I'm here, say something new to me, open my mind to a fresh idea today. So let's pray together. Gracious God, I believe you that you tell me that it is in my weakness that you are strong. Lord, I believe you, and I trust you. I do. So, Lord, let every breath, every word, every thought, every heartbeat, Lord, let it be yours. Open our eyes, our ears, and our minds so that we can see something we are not expecting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. We've been working on something here at Coon Rapids through the Advent season called Simply Honoring Jesus. And if you're asking yourselves, where are all the Christmas decorations? Guess what? Somebody said one day, I walked in and they said, where is everything? And I said, what do you mean? What else do we need? We've been working on this idea of honoring Jesus and focusing our minds and our hearts down on what it means to honor Jesus above everything or anything else. And it's not always easy to do, agreed? You've got Christmas traditions. You have cookies. You've got presents. Anybody lost the tape yet? Tape, scissors, all that? you got those little things. you got to hook on the presents with the name. What are those, tags? Anybody run out of tags yet? Did you ever make them yourself out of wrapping paper and fold them over like a present? Yeah, I've done that. Yep, yep, yep. You got stuff to do on Christmas. And the traditions are all fun and wonderful, but we've been working on honoring Jesus and taking a break from all of that when we're here, making this a break from those things. And so we've been working through a series of sermons. We've talked about coming together and focusing on what really matters in this world. Remembering the hope that Jesus offers in Christ. We've listened to the story in music and scripture. And yesterday, it was just yesterday, right? (laughs) We talked a lot about what it means to breathe in and out God's spirit and how important it is that God gave us our breath and how Jesus lived and breathed among us. And so today, we are on Celebrate. Well, those are the others. But today, we are, (laughs) sorry, 
We are here to celebrate Jesus' birth. Everybody agree? Yes? Yeah. So I've been thinking about this Christmas story, and I've pondered it many times because, of course, I'm 51, so I've had 51 years to think about the Christmas story. Anybody else? Anybody else 51? No. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I've been thinking about this Christmas story a lot. And aside from the Mary and Joseph and Jesus character, and of course the God in it, which is also the Jesus character, there's some other things happening in this Christmas story, and I've thought about it quite a bit. So you've got this one group of people. Did you hear? The heavenly host. Did you hear when the scripture reader talked about that? So the shepherds are out in that field, and then the heavenly host shows up. The heavenly host, what in the world is that? It is some weird crossing of dimensions where these shepherds or whatever, we don't understand, God can break the laws of nature anytime or of science anytime because God created them in the first place. But all these large, looming, singing critters show up. Wouldn't you be freaked out? Yep, amen, yep. So heavenly host is a big, important part. They are an important part of this Christmas story. And what do they do? They sing a lot. If you're not into music, the heavenly host is not for you. Got it? The heavenly host sing. And then we've got these other characters in the Christmas story that are really important. They are called the shepherds. And what do the shepherds do when they get to the manger? What do they do? Anybody know? They look at Jesus. That's pretty much it, right? They come over here and they just like, they just like, they just like look. I think this is a shirt. Is that a shirt? No, it's a, it's a sheet. <laughs> and they look. Okay? But then they go back and tell people about it. And then we've got another character. Three, three actually. We think. We don't really know. And they were the, um, the wise people who came over, right? That's later. It wasn't talked about in the story you heard today. And what do they do? They, what do they do? Anybody know? Yeah, they bring gifts. They show up, and they look, and they drop off valuables, and then they go. So we got three things going on here in the Christmas story. We've got a lot of things going on, but I want to focus on these three things, okay? These three important things. We got lots of people in ethereal clothing, all dressed kind of the same. Does that sound like choir robes to you? All dressed the same, singing lots of loud songs, okay? Which you guys were wonderful choir, by the way. Thank you. Um, and then you've got shepherds who are looking and visiting. And then you've got wise people who are bringing presents and leaving. Looking and leaving presents and leaving, okay? When you think about these three actions, I think, man, we're doing that now, aren't we? Check it out. How often do we recreate the Christmas story in churches by accident? Whoops, we do it all the time. Sometimes we do it on purpose. Like tonight, we do it on purpose, right? We gather together and we sing the songs. Yep, we'll do the candles later. Don't worry. Um, I've heard a few fall on the floor. If any of them rolled down between your feet, just start passing them back till somebody takes it, okay? Um, <laughs> not if it's lit. <laughs> Blow it out if it's lit. Um, so we're gathered in these churches like this, and we're hanging out together in this space, and there's lots of singing, right? But we're all coming to see something. I hope it's not me, but we are, right? And we even reenact the Christmas story with little people like that. Don't they look so happy? And with little people like this. Did anybody do this as a child, reenact the Christmas story? Did anyone ever force their children to do it? Did anyone get forced to do it? Me, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. It's okay. We reenact the Christmas story too. And so we got to have all the characters and the people. And sometimes we even do it live. Now, there's a church near here that did a live nativity recently over in Ramsey. That was Northern Light. I think they're super cool for having taken this on and does, done it. But just take note of that kid right there. He's thrilled. So we want to see this Christmas event and that pattern of looking at it that we see in the shepherds and the wise men, that pattern we see of looking at it holds true in how we practice celebrating Christmas. Think about it. 
you set up your living, your, your nativity scene, don't you? Does anybody collect them? I know some of you do, yeah. You set it up somewhere in your house, sometimes in your yard. Some people have blow up ones in their yard, right? In my neighborhood, there's an email going around because we're trying to figure out who is unplugging or popping all the blow up Christmas things because it's not happening yet. Yeah, rude, huh? But we set up the nativity in our yards because we want to look at something. You see it? We're looking at it. It's the same pattern as the shepherds and as the wise men, I think. We sing, we look at Jesus. We sing and we look at Jesus. We drop off money. And to be honest, you know what? It really worries me because it makes Jesus an inanimate object that we look at, that we come to see, that we drop off money to. Do you see this? It's how we celebrate Christmas, and it's what we tend to do in church, too. I worry about the church. I have life in the church. I, ha I have grown up in the church. I was taken to choir practice when I was three weeks old. Um, my mom, did, there were no options. I just went with her. My, my parents were divorced when I was young. I grew up rattling around in the halls. I love church, but I worry. I worry about how much sitting we do. I do. And I wonder what this means when we talk about celebrating Jesus' birth. What would Jesus have us do to celebrate his birth? What would Jesus have us do? How could we celebrate Jesus' birth a little differently. I mean, it's good that you're here. It, don't, don't get me wrong. You're all like, oh, she told us not to sit. Maybe we should go. But no, it's good that you're here. It's wonderful. But what could we be inspired to do differently tomorrow and the next day and the next day? Look at the pattern. Do you see the pattern of, of the stable? Look at it in the churches. I found all these pictures. We have our churches set up to come and sit and look. Do you see it? Look how many there are. I tried to get a statistic on how many churches there are, and I, I, you can't even find it. Aren't they incredible? And the pattern is come and sit and look and drop off some money so we can pay the bills. Some of you are thinking, come on, Diana, can't you just preach a regular Christmas Eve sermon? And I'm saying, no, I can't. Because I really think that God never intended for us just to come and see and leave, to come and drop off valuables and walk away. I really think that Jesus' birth is just one of the many amazing things about who this God is. This God is so much more than the Christmas story. Do you know the Christmas story is only told in detail like that in one of the four Gospels? Jesus is so much more. Jesus, we believe, was there in the beginning when the earth was created and there in the end. We believe that all of God was present all of the time, beyond our comprehension and beyond our imagination. And this Christmas story is just one touch point in the life of Christ right here on this earth. One touch point that we get together. There are so many more reasons for us to get together, to learn and to grow and to celebrate. God's love and power. And Jesus is very clear about how we can celebrate his coming to earth. He talks. In the Bible, Jesus talks because he grows past the manger. And it's beautiful. Jesus teaches some very poignant and difficult words. Here's one from the book of John. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. And in John 21, Jesus said, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. This is when he was questioning Peter. And Peter was saying, you know, I love you, Lord. And Jesus had to say it three times. Jesus offers this incredible 
Beautiful teaching in John 15, 9 through 13. Listen to this with me. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You want to talk about celebrating? Follow Jesus. That's a way better one. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. How does this picture of what Jesus wants for us reconcile with our pattern of building buildings with lots of chairs so we can come and sit and look? I think God wants to call us to come and, and learn so we can go and do and be Christ in this world. I think, we've been saying this here, that this is just half time. This is the learning, the training, the teaching, the how are you doing, and the rest of it is all the chance to celebrate Jesus' gift to us in coming to this earth. There's so much more than Christmas. There's so much more. Because even on the night Jesus was born, the beautiful, simple, humbling act that Jesus did for us, even that night, the cross was already in the landscape. It was already there. as we talked about yesterday morning. This is a God who created you, who breathed, oh, my clicker's crazy. I'm sorry, you guys. I gotta back up. This is a God who created you, who created all of us, who breathed the very life into your lungs, who opened your mind, who got you ready to walk on this earth, who created all of us. And this is the God who is willing to come as the most vulnerable thing ever to show that he would walk to any length. He would go every place that you would ever have to go. The most vulnerable place as a child. And this is a God who would go to the most difficult lengths for you to follow the most difficult path, all in a relentless pursuit to win your heart, all out of love for you and for me. This is a God who breathes the Holy Spirit on his disciples and breathes the Spirit into you. This is the God who we serve. So, you know, join the heavenly host singing. I do. And join the shepherds. Come and see how beautiful it is. And join the wise men. Offer what you can, anything you can. But let God be more. Let God be more. This is a God of massive creativity, revealing all of who God is in ways we can barely comprehend. Our God is passionately, relentlessly in pursuit of you. Our God is not a stagnant little porcelain doll. This is a God who chose that humble, servant posture for your sake, to be with you, to walk with you, to teach you, to live for you and to die for you and to rise again for you.
to live and breathe among us, within us, and from us. Do you want to celebrate Jesus' birth? Go and do likewise. Live, love, serve. Be Christ in this world. Amen? Would you please pray with me? Holy God, on Christmas it's so incredible to think that you would do this, that you would come like this, that in all that you are and all that you have made and all you're capable of, Lord, beyond our comprehension, you come as a human. You walk among us to teach us, to love us, Lord. You do this out of excruciating love. Oh, Lord, that we could learn to love like you. Oh, Lord, that we could learn to move past our seats and go and do and serve with that same relentless passion that you have for your people. Lord, inspire your church this Christmas. Show us how to rise up, how to love people in this community so that they will know you. They will know what your love is, and they will know they are accepted. They'll know your grace. Jesus, thank you for Christmas. Thank you for everything you give us during this season. Thank you for our families and our friends. Thank you for the gatherings. And Lord, thank you for all the peace that you bring to us this season, even when we're struggling or missing people at the table, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your gracious love as we pray together those words your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, in just a minute here, we're going to light the candles. This is a favorite tradition on Christmas Eve, but I'm hoping you'll think of it in a different way tonight. I'm hoping you'll think of it as the light of Christ is within you. It's God incarnate in you. And you'll do something so you won't be dangerous. You'll blow out your candle before you leave, and we'll all go home. But I hope when you watch the candle, I hope it will be a beginning, a beginning of a new light, a new way of thinking about it, a new hope, a new peace, a new inspired idea for how you can love the Lord this Christmas. Let's see, we need a couple people to help. Let's see, Ari, you want to come help me? Come on. Come here. Psst, psst. Come on, come on, come on. No. Hey, Corey, you want to help? Okay, come on. <laughs> psst, psst. You got a candle? Go get a candle. Do you have one? Okay, cool. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna spread it, okay? So you can start it over there. You ready? Here, turn your candle to mine. 
We're just going to play the first verse instrumental so you can get your candles lit, okay? Lord at thy birth. Gracious God, fill our hearts with your light. Fill our souls with your peace, our eyes and our minds with your grace, that we may learn to live and love differently because of you. Lord, thank you for coming to us like this and for loving us in spite of all the things we do. Thank you for this gathering tonight and for all that you're inspiring already. Bless these homes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.